Alright, I promised you I was going to show you all some more stuff about uh, refrigeration or uh, air conditioning. You remember the other day when I had the, uh, I had about a 55 suction and uh, about a 135 uh, discharge pressure. Well, you know, it was about 65, 70 degrees outside and today it's up to uh, about 90. And uh, you can see the difference. You know, we got about 69 suction and about... Oh, about 185 head pressure. That's just because of uh, the temperature outside and also the temperature uh, inside the house. You know, you got more heat load. And uh, you can see that uh, the suction line is uh, it's sweat. Okay, that's a good thing. Uh, you never want it to be froze up. It's always just going to be sweat. And this liquid line right here, it's really going to be ambient temperature. Uh, it's not going to be hot or cold or anything. It's just going to be ambient temperature. If it is warm, uh, you're low of refrigerant. That's just the way it is. But anyway, what I was going to tell you is, uh, you know, the other day I said that uh, any refrigeration had, any refrigeration unit had four uh, basic components, and that would be the compressor, the condenser, some type of a metering device, and also an evaporator. Well, how it works is um, it pumps the refrigerant through the system. It is a uh, complete circuit, uh, kind of like a loop, if you would. And uh, I'm going to go through the basic compression cycle, try to explain it to you. Uh, the compressor itself, it, all it is is a pump, and it pumps vapor refrigerant. It cannot pump a liquid. Uh, if you try to make it pump a liquid, uh, it will crash your compressor, and uh, you don't want to replace one. You're looking at about 1500 bucks. Uh, but anyway, the compressor takes uh, suction gas, uh, low pressure vapor and it compresses it so it raises the pressure on it and uh, at the same time it raises the temperature on it just from heat of compression well the heat of compression uh, that's one type of heat that uh, that there is and uh, there's another heat involved as well and that's called uh, that is the heat that it's picked up from inside the conditioned space uh, that has uh, been absorbed into the cold refrigerant in the evaporator. That travels with the refrigerant and uh, so at the time that the compressor compresses the vapor into a uh, high pressure discharge vapor then it's got two types of heat involved. It's got the heat of compression and it's also got the uh, heat that was absorbed from the conditioned space. And it, uh, it puts that vapor into the condenser itself. Okay, and because a uh, fan pulls air, airflow across that condenser coil, it expels the heat from within the refrigerant. And uh, what that's gonna do is, it's gonna uh, change the state of the uh, high pressure discharge vapor, uh, it's going to convert it into a liquid. It's still going to be under high pressure, but it's going to be a liquid now. And we're going to take that low pressure, uh, I mean that high pressure liquid, uh, which is going to be at ambient temperature because uh, it's already gave up its heat. And uh, we're going to take that liquid and put it into some type of a metering device. Now, a metering device can be thought of as like a uh, a garden hose where you have a nozzle on the end and you can uh, adjust it to where you know water will just spray out just a little bit you know you can feel uh, the water that you spray and it's noticeably cooler uh, it's going to be the same principle kind of uh, this uh, high pressure liquid we're going to spray it into a larger area because the height that it's spraying into is going to be bigger. 
and it's also at a lower pressure so it immediately causes a, uh, a great uh, cooling effect and uh, because of that uh, that, that liquid it's going to be real cold. It will be, the, the temperature of that liquid will be determined by the uh, suction pressure that the system is running at. You remember I, t I showed you about the, uh, the gauge here and uh, you know where the pressure was at uh, determined what the uh, refrigerant temperature inside the evaporator would be. Well, that's what I'm talking about. So, your uh, high pressure liquid that was sprayed into this uh, larger area uh, of tubing and uh, now it's, it's turned cold and uh, you're gonna pretty much flood your evaporator but not all the way because you want it to turn back into a vapor before uh, right as it uh, gets out of the uh, uh, exit pipe of the evaporator itself and at that point to where it turns from uh, liquid back to a vapor, uh, that's what's called boiling off because the refrigerant itself, uh, the, the liquid refrigerant, it's actually boiling. I mean, it will be, uh, uh, you know, it's gonna be clear and it's gonna be uh, boiling uh, just like water on a stove, except it's gonna be really cold. And uh, so that is the point to where, it, or, or the point at which it, goes from a liquid back, back to a vapor because you don't want to introduce li liquid back into your compressor. You want it to be a vapor and uh, you're going to boil it off and then uh, then you have low pressure vapor entering the compressor once again and it goes through the cycle uh, again just as I explained it except it does this uh, several times a second. So I hope that uh, explained a lot about, you know, what does the refrigerant do inside the system? Um, in reality, it is a means by which the heat inside your house uh, is absorbed into it and it is carried outside and then expelled. That heat is expelled to the atmosphere where it makes no difference whatsoever. Uh, and uh, th for reference, this system right here runs off of floor-to-floor uh, -floor methane or R22. It's going to be, uh, it will boil at uh, uh, minus 41 degrees of atmospheric pressure. And what that means is, if you were to, uh, any temperature above, ooh, man, it's a whole lot louder now any temperature above uh, minus 41 let's say it was uh, minus 40 and you took a uh, a big mass of uh, r22 liquid and just dumped it out on the floor well it would be boiling it would be turning back into a vapor because it's uh, above its boiling point at atmospheric pressure well it, and at the same time let's say that you could take that room and turn it into uh, minus 42 degrees below zero then you could take the liquid dump it out into the room just on the floor and it'll look like a pool of water it will do nothing it will lay there uh, absolutely still it won't move it won't uh, you know it won't do anything but its boiling temperature at atmospheric pressure again is uh, minus 41 degrees. So uh, you can get some real cold uh, temperatures out of uh, R22. And most of your home air conditioning units, that's what they run off of. Of course, they're going to phase it out and they're going to go uh, to a different refrigerant. And uh, they're going to phase the R22 out in a few years. Anyway, that was a lengthy explanation of uh, what the refrigerant does in a system, and uh, I hope you understood it, and I hope it helped you.